Who do you fancy to be the next leader of the Conservative Party? I don't fancy any of them because none of them will improve the quality of life for most of the people. People have been buffeted by a cost of living crisis, the highest inflation for 40 years, the highest taxes for 70 years. Their, in, their disposable incomes have been reduced. We have uh, corruption in the highest circles in this country and none of these uh, uh, candidates are going to improve anybody's life. So let me put it another way. Uh, in this country we have had a right-wing coup brewing ever since 1979 and uh, all that uh, we have done now is reached a particular stage where the Conservatives feel that the face of the leader needs to be changed. They are not going to change any of their repressive policies. They are still going ahead with attacking human rights. They still want to withdraw the UK from the jury, from the influence of the European Court of Human Rights. They are still implementing human trafficking in the form of people being uh, sent to Rwanda and elsewhere. So nothing really changes. And I think that means we all have to be vigilant and defend our rights and the integrity of the country. As a former finance professional and academic, can you tell me what are the best ways in which anyone can understand the types of instruments that are being signed, the types of uh, financial deals that the government is doing with private companies which are ripping off the public? What, what, where could people start to look at that type of thing? I think uh, firstly we don't know the full extent of the contracts that the government signed. We still don't know so-called companies who got the benefit of what they call VIP lanes. We don't have a complete list of companies who got the furlough support, COVID loans, and many of these were fraudulent. So first thing we need is transparency, public accountability, exactly the kind of thing the government has run away from. They're not even accountable to Parliament, far less the general uh, public. So we need complete transparency. And I think it would be interesting to see whether any candidate for office promises that. That said, I'm highly sceptical, mainly because uh, they did not challenge this uh, carefully constructed opacity which the government uh, constructed around these contracts. Brilliant. Another question in relation to financial services. Uh, there's an expression, an acronym ESG. Oh, sorry, could you just... Yeah, there's an expression ESG. Uh, most people have never heard of it, but it's environmental social governance, as I'm sure you know. Um, people talk about mis-selling of ESG, greenwashing, and that type of thing. Uh, have you got any views on what can be done to clean that up if there is a problem and who might do it and what incentives or disincentives might there be? Well, there is a fundamental problem. I think there's uh, lots of problems with uh, uh, all kinds of systems of governance. Firstly, you need to democratise Britain. And that uh, means you've got to not only change the voting system and the political system, but you've got to democratise work. You've got to have democracy at work so that people can scrutinise what corporations are doing. You know, corporations wield huge influence on people's lives, but are accountable to virtually no one. They even buy out the political system. You will see fairly soon Boris Johnson will be a consultant to some corporations, just like his predecessors. And his pre predecessor, David Cameron, was a consultant, and he wasn't actually trying to improve social welfare. He was trying to get his... Uh, uh, employers uh, into the inner circle of politics and get them loans, contracts, favourable terms. So basically our political system is corrupt and that is why we have bad governance, whether it's to do with the economy, uh, governance or the social system or anything of that kind. When it comes to something like enforcement procedure, like of either um, making sure that people that say they're doing something because everybody's saying that they're green everyone is saying that they're environmentally socially blah -de blah -de blah you know equity for gender and all this stuff they're all saying that but it's not happening uh, and it's provably not happening in many different fronts where do you think enforcement procedure may come for that type of thing i think there's a real problem here it's funny in the house of lords today we've been debating the misdemeanors of water companies take water companies as an example what the government has done is handed uh, sorry I want to carry on so what the government has done is handed a monopoly to private corporations without any accompanying controls and uh, 
basically if they wanted to, to control uh, the uh, discharge of, for example, raw sewage into the rivers, all they need to do is ensure that customers have a vote on executive pay, customers sit on the boards of these companies. All these things are an anathema to Conservative Party. That is not what they want to do. So a lot of this talk about we want to deal with environmental crisis, climate crisis, is just talk. There is very little else to it. You know, ordinary people want to breathe clean air, they want to drink clean water, but the structures just are not skewed in their favour. The structures are all about advancing corporate power. What do you think would help recognise things like gaslighting on this level? And yeah, how, how do you think it may be possible for people to understand what's happening and then afterwards create a change with respect to, for example, uh, being audited and then afterwards uh, putting the right things in place to... Because you said auditors are auditing auditors and actually it's not, it's not helping. Well, I think what we need is a shift away from serving corporations. We need a shift to serving the people. Corporations should exist to serve the people, not the other way around. And what we need to do is inform people. We need independent media. So when you look at the media, it's owned by a handful, a uh, number of corporations and wealthy individuals. That itself is bad for democracy. And so many things the media simply does not report. Uh, you know, we had a very well-known example of a very senior journalist from The Telegraph telling us that he was forbidden from writing any negative stories about HSBC because HSBCs were major advertisers of The Telegraph. That is just one example. That kind of thing is happening at every level. It happens in the academia. You know, I spent many years in the academy. And what do you find? Academics get research grants from big business, but then the big business exercises veto on whether you can publish the, the research findings, especially if they are negative. And that itself is bad. So basically, you know, our society has not been geared to informing people. Our society has been geared to furthering the power and influence of select few corporations and individuals. So in a sense, you know, somebody might say, what kind of a revolution are you calling for? The only revolution we really need is a revolution of human consciousness. And that means information, education, and people need to get out in the streets to express their views. You can't be an armchair critic and uh, then say, well, I don't like this, don't like that. Our predecessors got out to the streets, whether it was the Jaro marches, whether it was the suffragettes, they got out in the streets and they said, we are not going to put up with this. So, and, and, you know, we are standing here near Parliament. Parliament has a huge history of protecting status quo. It has presided over virtually every single social atrocity. It has tried to deny people rights. It is a reactive place. It will only react when people generate pressure in the streets. And that is what I would urge people to do. Can I ask you one last question before you go? Because it's about five to five and I know you've got to be somewhere. And that is uh, Green Silk happened and there were about 12 inquiries that set, set up and there was the Boardman inquiry, which was the official government one. It reported in two rounds, the first one, then the second one. It got almost no coverage at all. And, you know, if there were any recommendations, they were essentially ignored. The subject of the revolving door, Acoba, Eric Pickles, can you talk about... Uh, that in any way whatsoever and whether or not there are any recommendations that you might have or anything? I think Green Seal has many dimensions. Well, one thing we have to bear in mind is governments announce investigations. That is a way of silencing critics, way of disarming journalists, simply saying don't ask any questions because something is being inquired into. Next thing we have to ask ourselves is what are the terms of reference of these inquiries? What is left out? What is left out essentially is the way the cap ca that capitalism itself operates. It enrolls policy makers, it enrolls former prime ministers, politicians to open doors and thereby many of your local businesses, others who can't afford to fund that kind of a uh, resource, uh, get marginalized. So, you know, there are many aspects to this debate which really we need to be looking at. 
Is there anywhere we should go to try and get more information about either what you're doing or anything useful? Uh, there are many well-known uh, civil society organizations, whether it is Corruption Watch, Amnesty, Transparency International, Tax Justice Network. There are many, many others who do excellent work to expose these things and they all ought to be supported and people ought to hear from them and even better, people should go and join civil society organizations, join local organizations. You know, often I'm told by people, well, I can't do anything. I don't buy into that. My argument is everybody can do something. Nobody can do everything. But if you look at the history of the working class in the UK, against all the odds, they managed to get some rights. Question is, how did they do it? They use leaflets, they use oratory, they use music, they use theater, they use plays, they use songs. So we have many, many, many tools available to us to, to as, as it were, to inform people, to make them aware that their social condition is not the outcome of some invisible hand of fate, but it is the visible hand of our political institutions, which has put them in the state they are in. And that can all be changed for the better. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. Okay.